What's up guys, it's Tosh here, back with another video, and boy, do we have some stuff to talk about. Second round of the playoffs has concluded. Uh, the Mavericks just eviscerated the Suns last night. Uh, Milwaukee got upset by the Celtics. I'm, I'm ready to dive into all of it, bro. Like, honestly, I posted on my story yesterday, on my Instagram story, follow that link in the bio. I literally said, uh, you know, it's game seven day, I'm hoping for some back and forth games, you know, hopefully entertaining games, you know, hopefully um because we don't get game sevens a lot you know what i'm saying i felt like a lot of the playoffs were like a lot of you know sixes or fives or you know nothing nothing to the game seven caliber because it, it felt like a well for me personally at least it felt like a pretty predictable you know uh matchup heading towards the finals i had milwaukee and the suns going back and it's crazy that both teams were in a game seven and both teams basically got eviscerated bro milwaukee left grant williams open for for three he shot it 18 times seven for 18 he didn't shoot the best but that still beat them you know bro was raining down threes brooke lopez was just like they their mentality literally was to leave him open and that was their downfall obviously outside of some guys on the bucks not playing the best you know uh Giannis didn't even have that spectacular performance he had like a, a 25 and 20 game of like nine assists but he didn't shoot the best so that's a little unfortunate for him and then obviously you know chris middleton not being there for like the past he literally missed like 10 games up to that point uh so it's pretty unfortunate for the Bucks fans, bro. Uh, it's it's unfortunate, you know what I mean? But I feel like they'll be back. I don't want to overreact too much or like slander Giannis for not doing enough. Like I don't, that argument is weird. I'm not saying I don't want to blame Giannis. Like obviously the best player is going to take the blame and say we should have done this and this and this better. But I mean, there's nothing more you could do with that roster, bro. The only other people really showing up consistently were like outside of Giannis were Drew sometimes and you know Bobby occasionally but like there was no consistent other guy outside of Giannis obviously but yeah the Bucks will be back I'm not tripping off that too much they didn't have Chris Middleton but the Suns is where where it gets insanely serious number one seed 64 wins right home court advantage game seven against essentially Luka because Brunson has been on and off in this series, you know, he's either been in foul trouble or they've hounded him defensively or he's having a good game. It's either of those three, you know, it's not a consistent, he's giving you buckets every night because they were hounding him defensively. He ended up showing up in this game. I think he had, he finished with like 24 points or something, something, something along those lines. Dinwiddie stepped up, you know, obviously it's been a lot of Luka. So uh, Dinwiddie and Brunson, you know, they, 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 they are a little inconsistent, you know, uh, one of the commentators on the call was like, you know, there's not a consistent one-two punch with the Mavericks. It's mostly Luka and occasionally Brunson and occasionally Dinwiddie. Obviously, in the Utah series, Brunson was going crazy. He held down the four, four Dallas until Luka got back. So that was a little bit different then. But in this series specifically, you know, Brunson has, has been a little on and off. All I know is Brunson's getting paid this offseason, and I'm excited to see where he goes or if he comes back. I hope and pray that Dallas... You know, they, they pay him, bro. Because, like, you lose him, and it's like, you're not. I, I don't know what they do in the offseason. Obviously, they, they, they like, if they don't pay him, they want to give money to somebody else or sign somebody or trade for somebody. I don't know what their plan is, but pay Brunson, bro. Same thing with, like, Poole next year and his and his free agency. If the, but, like, the Warriors better pay Poole, bro. That's, like, a whole other conversation for another video I'll, I'll talk about. But pay Poole, pay Brunson, bro. Like, come on. You know, it's so crazy. I'm looking at the box score, bro. Luka literally had 27 at the half, and that's the same amount of points the Suns had at the half, which is pretty crazy. Chris Paul and Devin Booker combined for like seven for like, damn, like 20 something. Like, bro, like that's crazy, you know? Book and CP had no points at the half, which is so surreal to me. Like, I'm, I'm rooting for the Mavericks, not because I'm, like, bandwagon or anything, but, like, not even because I hate the Suns. I, I love CP, bro. I want CP to eventually get a ring, and I hope he does before he retires. He uh, came out in the post-game interview and said, you know, we're going to be back next year. He's not retiring. So, I, I, I don't know if he gets it next year, but, it's, I, I like, hey, man, CP, get one ring, bro. At least one ring, bro. I'm hounded for that one ring for CP, bro. But yeah, man, it's crazy. Aiden... Uh, there was some stuff going on with him and Monty, um, the coach for the Suns, obviously. Um, there was some something that happened. Like, there was a de de defensive play after they hit a shot. Uh, he had subbed him out. Uh, Monty had sub eight now, and he had asked him if he wanted to come back in the fourth, and he had said nope. That's what a lot of people have been saying, uh, like, that were in the arena and kind of, like, reading their lips and, like, hearing in on what they were saying. So that's something. Um I don't think there's anything too crazy. You're not going to look too deep into it. Aiden was probably just upset that they were getting blown out and destroyed in the game seven, you know. Number one seed in the West. At home, by the way, getting smacked by Luka and the Mavs, bro. 
It's just crazy, man. You know what I'm saying? 30 for Dinwiddie off the bench. Literally no one else was in double digits off the bench. Brunson finished with 24. Luka 35 and 10 with six threes. Like, come on, bro. Like, Luka Magic is here. Luka Magic is real, bro. Yeah, that's that's pretty much my thoughts on uh, that, those, uh, those second round uh, matchups. Um, you know, obviously, you know, shout out Joel Embiid. He was hurt. He still played through it. He they they got eliminated. Uh, it's unfortunate, but I mean, what can you do? You know, the the all the stuff with Harden in the media saying he's washed. I cannot bring myself to say that James Harden is washed yet. I don't want to overreact. I absolutely dislike uh, recency bias. Um, I know a lot of NBA fans fall plague to that. It, it happens to the best of us, bro. I, was, I feel like every other year, Stephen A. and Kendrick Perkins are on TV calling and some someone new the greatest player in the world, bro. And I kind of can uh, uh, like attest to that a little bit because obviously the best player in the world is going to change year to year sometimes. But I feel like a lot of the conversation was KD at first and then he got swept and now it's Giannis. And it's like, I'm not about to switch sides and do all that switching. You know what I'm saying? I'm not one for like debates too much because I've only been watching basketball for a couple years, but I don't like, I don't, I'm, I'm never too confident in myself when I'm debating. So I just don't, I kind of just sit back and enjoy basketball. Obviously I can say, oh, he's better than him or he's better than him. Or if you put him on this team, I can do that. But I'm not about to go like no hardcore debate saying he the greatest in the world. He like the op. That, that's for the media, bro. That's for the, the, the television heads to ha have, you know, headlines. I'm, no. But yeah, man, Harden, get, for me, give it until next season, about 20 to 30 games in, we can really determine to see if he is washed or not. So wait, guys like him and Westbrook, everyone's saying, oh, they're washed, or oh my God, our favorite point guards from the 2010s are diminishing, or like, bro. I don't, like Westbrook's case is a little different because I honestly don't know what's going on with him. Uh, a lot of people have been arguing it's a fit thing, uh, his fit on the Lakers. You know, you don't put the best guys around him, but that still, does, that still doesn't excuse his shooting performance. You know, certain decision making uh, situations. You know, with turnovers, he's been dealing with stuff like this for years. But it's very apparent and put front and center on this Lakers team. So the, his case is a little different. But Harden, I don't know if it's the hamstring thing. Um, you know, last year after the short turnaround, because it was a shortened season, so they had a short turnaround. He was like, I didn't have time to rehab my hamstring properly. So I don't know if he's dealing with that still. Uh, I don't know if it's because he's having, he's been facilitating more. So he's kind of deferring with the facilitating and not being his usual offensive aggressive self, which is crazy because he's one of the best offensive players of all time, regardless of how you feel about him with the free throws and the, and the ref and the, all that. But he is one of the greatest offensive players in the game, bro. And to see him kind of, you know, like that diminish, you know, he's averaging like what, 22 and like 10 assists, something like that. Great stat line, great stat line. But you, when you watch those games of him, it's like, this isn't James Harden, you know? You know, lackluster shooting percentage and, you know, assists are great, but if you're not winning, you know, it's the assists are not gonna mean much. So I'm gonna wait to react to the James Harden stuff because I don't think he's washed. I, I, I guess I'm just trying to give him as much time as possible to beat the allegations because I, I, like I said, I hate overreacting. I hate recency bias. It's not good, bro. It's not good, you know? Whoever wins the chip this year, I'll be happy for them. I personally think it's gonna be the Warriors. I think they take that, but I'm not gonna have no recency bias, bro. Literally. And shout out John and boys in Memphis. Um, you know, obviously he got hurt. He had uh, he had jumped on a, a clay pump fake. He was open for three. Obviously you don't wanna leave clay open for three. So he jumped, he like literally soared across court and bumped his knee with clay. So he got hurt. There was a lot of stuff with like, Oh, did Poole injure him? Cause like there was a replay showing where Poole had kind of like pulled on his knee and like it kind of like snapped back. It looked really weird. I even posted on my story saying, yo, what are you doing? Like, what is that? But it was the him jumping into clay and bumping his knee, which is unfortunate. Um, and it's crazy cause the Grizzlies this season have been really good without Ja, which is not a shot at Ja at all. It's just an a testament to how good that team is without their star player and how good those role players are. And like they step up in big moments. So. The Grizzlies are going to be nice for a couple of years, but um, it's a shame, you know, with Ja, it's easy to say, you know, what could have, what could the outcome have been? Um, I feel like it'd be, it, it would have been more or less the same, you know, Warriors and Six, but we'll never know. You know, there's always next year, you know, I don't want to hound too much on a series. You know, things happen. Injuries are a part of the game. I hate them. You know, you look at a player like Joel Embiid, you know, you, you, you stay healthy all year, you know, finish top two in uh, MVP voting, two actually, since, you know, Jokic is the MVP. You go, you go all year, you beat the health allegations because for the longest time it was, oh, uh, he can't stay healthy, Jerome Levine, he can't stay healthy, yada, yada, yada. But he, he stayed healthy all year just to get hurt in the playoffs, bro. And then 
obviously you're trading for another star like Harden and for him to not show up even, it hurts that case even more. You know, it's it's a shame for Joel Embiid and, and, and Sixers fans in general, bro. They've been through a lot with all this, with the whole Ben Simmons thing and the, the process for all those years and, you know, not holding on to Jimmy and all this stuff, this catastrophic, uh, like, like sequence of events that just sucks for them. So, man, you like, bro, just, you hate injuries, man. You hate injuries. So uh, the Grizzlies will be back for sure. Um, shout out to Ja. But yeah, man, the Eastern Conference Finals and the Western Conference Finals are looking pretty great. We got Heat and Celtics, number one seeded Heat are back on their stuff, bro. Like since the bubble, you know, they, they, they hear all the disrespect and they're back, you know, after getting swept by the Bucks last year, they're, they're back for vengeance, bro. You know, they're back against the Celtics in the conference finals like the 2020 bubble. I'm pretty sure that was the conference finals, right? It was because they beat Milwaukee and then they beat, I don't remember, uh, but Celtics and Celtics and Heat are back in the conference finals. And then we have Warriors and Mavs, which is going to be a very interesting series. Um, I don't think anyone but Mavs fans had the Mavericks in seven. I had the Suns in six. I had the Bucks and six against the Celtics. I wasn't a believer of the Celtics all season when they were making their comeback run. When they were like 16 and 19 in like what, January? I'm like, it's looking rough. You know, all the Jalen Brown, J Jason Tatum stuff, Trey one of them pick. And it's like they 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 bodied up and finished the season out and finished as the second seed. So I I don't know, man. I, I couldn't have seen this coming. How, how do both the finals teams, you know, in a game seven, lose like that in the in the fashion they did at least you know what i mean it's pretty crazy uh you know but yeah back to what i was saying about the mavericks and the warriors bro it's gonna be an interesting series it's gonna be really interesting to see luca going up against this championship caliber team this elite warriors team they're back in prime position to win that title which i think they will personally that's me it's gonna be interesting it's gonna be really interesting to see these conference finals matchups um I'm not necessarily rooting for a team just because I think the Warriors are going to win. I'm just saying I feel like they have the best experience, the best talent. They have a chance to go to the finals, and they have a, they have a chance to become four-time champs, bro. Steph, Clay, and Dre, personally, bro, if Steph wins his fourth championship, he has a case as like like on like some LeBron level type stuff. You know, four-time NBA champ. Uh, I don't even want to get into the whole Steph LeBron debate, like one-on-one -on -one individual accolades, but like in terms of championship caliber and like just all around player, you know what I mean? Like Steph is, if, if the Warriors win that championship, bro, Steph gets his fourth ring. He is going to be considered one of the greats. He, he is top 10 all time. He, he already is top 10 all time. Probably, probably. Like I said, I'm not good at debating or lists. I'm just throwing statements out there. Don't, they don't hold any weight. So don't overreact, but Nah, Seth, Seth gets his fourth chip. There, there's going to be some conversations about him as an all-time great. He's already, arguably, in my opinion, the greatest point guard, the, like the greatest point guard of all time, bro. Like he is, he's him, bro. He is the greatest point guard of all time. Warriors win the chip. That, that, that that's going to be a topic of conversation. But yeah, man, let me know what you guys think in the comments, bro. The Eastern Conference Finals and the Western Conference Finals are set up. We also have the new awards the NBA came out with to give uh, the uh, Eastern Conference and Western Conference Finals, uh, you know, winners of the series. Obviously, they get a trophy like they always have. But, you know, the individual players that were the best in those Conference Finals get uh, Conference Finals MVP, which is kind of crazy because uh, a lot of talk on Twitter has been, I better not hear any Conference Finals MVP uh, stuff brought up in debates, which I which I think is absolutely hilarious, bro. But we'll see, man. I'm excited for it. Uh, the trophies definitely add a new, a bit more oomph to the to the conference finals because ob obviously a lot of the players that you know they host a trophy, they do a big celebration, and they move on. But you know it's cool to give give the best players in those conference final series to envy like the conference finals MVP because like you really think about it, bro. This is. This is the, the, the conference finals. This is the finals of your conference. Who the best team coming out of each conference is. Obviously, it's cool to have an MVP trophy for the conference finals. So that's a cool little twist on things. But yeah, man, like I said, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Let me know in the, the comments who you think is going to the finals, who you think is taking it all. And, you know, more importantly, who's coming out of these Eastern Conference Finals and Western Conference Finals. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Hope you all enjoyed. Catch y'all in the next one. It's Taj, and I'll see you guys.